So hello, today we have Amelia, who's a Leicester medical student in her second year. Hi, Amelia. Hi. Hi. Thank you for being here this evening. Um, Thanks for having so, me. No worries. Um, so yeah, if we can just start by, yeah, what, what have you been up to before medicine? Um, so I initially wanted to apply um, to medicine straight out of school mm -hmm. and I didn't get in. Mm -hmm. um, and my first kind of train of thought was, let me just do biomed and, you know, go down kind of mm -hmm. the classic route of doing biomed and then applying again. Mm -hmm. um, and so on. But whilst I was kind of roaming UCAS, I came across a degree in Kiel, which um, mm -hmm. was a dual honours degree, and it was human biology with international relations. Mm -hmm. Now, international relations was always something that like kind of nagged at me. And I liked the idea of like global health, um, mm -hmm. epidemiology, these types of things, public health. So I was like, wow, I didn't know I could even combine these two. Like it was such a random combination. Nowhere else in the country did it. So mm -hmm. I was like, let me put that as my fifth option. And, you know, things happened, got one interview, got rejected, didn't get into med school. And I took that fifth option um, straight out of school. Um, I absolutely loved the degree. Um, it was awesome. Um, and I'm so glad I did it. I think it gave me a lot of perspective and it helped me grow up because mm -hmm. now looking back, I don't think I would have been ready for medicine at 18. Yeah. No way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was kind of my route. And then, um, First year, I was a bit umming and ahhing whether to mm -hmm. reapply again because I was really enjoying my degree and I was thinking, well, maybe go down like science diplomacy or global health, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, like the desire to do medicine, like it was still there. It was like still mm -hmm. in my heart, if I'm honest. Um, yeah. And then in second year, um, I decided to basically apply and, mm -hmm. you know, do it properly, get work experience again, mm -hmm. do it. And then I was like, what's the worst that's going to happen? I don't get in again. I've already mm -hmm. been rejected. <laughs> So yeah. it's okay. And then I applied and got in basically straight from uni again. So mm -hmm. I have not had a break from education ever. Yeah. But so far, so good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, so you said work experience. What sort of work experience were you doing in the lead up for um, your second application? So I volunteered for about a year um, mm -hmm. on the maternity ward at Royal Folk nice. Hospital. Okay. So the nearest hospital basically to my house. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just doing things like changing beds, helping mm -hmm. with meal times, just mm -hmm. chatting to patients, whatever kind of the HCA at the time on the ward mm -hmm. needed help with, I was just there um, mm -hmm. to support her. And um, it was great because even though I didn't have that much patient interaction, um, it still helped me to kind of see how the NHS runs and mm -hmm. see how shifts work and um, see the different roles. That really, really helped me. So like mm -hmm. the difference between a HCA and nurse, um, mm -hmm a matron, a doctor, mm -hmm. kind of what they do. So that was really beneficial. And then what else? Um, I did some shadowing at yes. um, the Christie in Manchester, mm -hmm. which is their cancer hospital, mm -hmm. um, which I absolutely loved. Mm -hmm. um, but we all know shadowing is not the best thing to do. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah it's, it's good, it's good. But sometimes they're like, no shadowing <laughs> mm. um, on the requirements. But I, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. And it really kind mm -hmm. of, like sparked an interest in oncology and like mm -hmm. quite, like reaffirmed it from mm -hmm. a more clinical perspective for me yeah yeah I think it's all about as well what you take away from it if you actually just follow someone around then that's not very helpful but if you get to talk to people and you know you get to learn a lot and you reflect on it and I think yeah there's and sometimes it's just hard for people to get experience so yeah um and the thing yeah. I see like to people looking for experience most of the time, apart from a very few unis where they really require you to have clinical, you know, set hours, mm -hmm. most of the time it doesn't matter what you do. It's exactly what yeah. you said. It's what you take mm -hmm. from it. You could literally work in a shop and mm -hmm. still have, you know, take amazing things from that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, learn the skills you need to be a good doctor from absolutely, mm -hmm. you know, most things. Yeah. So, or yeah. even like a role in school or at your mm -hmm. uni or wherever you are kind of in your life. So. Mm -hmm. It yeah matter, yeah you can pull out those key like communication working with a team like exactly. you can get that so many places yeah um, hs values <laughs> yeah yeah um so from your first like when you were first applying did you feel like looking back like way less prepared was it a bit of a shock going through the application process 100 percent, like 100 mm percent. -hmm. you can have phrased it even better um i when i was first applying i just felt so clueless Mm -hmm. like I, I I had my interview at Liverpool 
and I just I didn't know what to prepare like I didn't know what to expect it was like a multiple mini and I just remember being like like it was just a world mm-hmm. like what the heck even was that mm-hmm. yeah um so whilst I think I went to a grammar school so I think the support mm-hmm. was there mm-hmm. um I it, I don't know it wasn't enough like I said to you kind of mm-hmm. initially I wish I had a platform like this or I mm-hmm. wish I had more contact with medical students and doctors yeah. Mm -hmm. to know what it look what the process looks like and what to expect and kind of what the key takeaways are from it and what they're looking Mm -hmm. for um so yeah no definitely I agree it was just a whirlwind yeah and did it feel different applying I suppose as a as a like an older student as a student with a a degree like approaching that application process how how did it change um I think from a practical side obviously kind of you know what's Mm -hmm. coming so it's the same stuff just again Mm -hmm. but more importantly I felt like the confidence I gained over the Mm -hmm. three years living by myself Mm -hmm. dealing with my own problems you know going Mm -hmm. to you having to cook for myself all these little things they Mm -hmm. really um, shape you into kind of who you are and they really give you a lot more confidence and I think perhaps that's what I was lacking the first time around so Mm -hmm. I think having those extra few years on the um, you know school leavers is yeah I don't know for me it was so beneficial because I, it was like I was a different person on the other side yeah. and I knew I wanted it so much more it wasn't just kind of mm-hmm. oh this thing that maybe you know I'll try and get into when I finish yeah. school was like yeah you know, it was the drive was there um and the confidence was there definitely yeah mm-hmm. that was and did you apply to grad course like a mixture of grad and undergrad or like what where did, like how did you apply so I took my UK cat. Yeah. And when I took my UK cat, mm-hmm. and it was not the best thing ever. So mm-hmm. it, honestly, my UK cat did not improve much from the first application yeah. to the second, like barely yeah, okay. anything. Mm-hmm. Something like 10 points. Yeah. Um, so I took my UK cat and I was like, I know I can't apply just to grad med, which mm-hmm. would have been ideal for me because of the finances. Mm-hmm. I, mean, yeah. time, I did want to graduate as soon as possible and obviously mm-hmm. the financial burden even though I knew I could fund undergrad, I didn't really want to put my uh, parents through it. Yeah. Know, to avoid it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I applied to um, three undergrads in the end mm-hmm. um, because I knew my UK cat wasn't strong enough and one mm-hmm. grad, which was yeah. Warwick. Okay. Um, and the Warwick rejected me straight off, no interview. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the three, I got interviews and I got three offers after interview. Nice. So... I kind of I guess when you're up against 18 year olds I guess it is a different pool isn't it and they don't Mm -hmm. um, look for such kind of um high grades or high UK cats and things Mm -hmm. like that so it is different um and I felt like perhaps because I was older and I was kind of competing I don't like that word Mm -hmm. you know what I mean competing with like yeah Mm -hmm. uh, candidates I I felt that confidence like I had Mm -hmm. it I was like I know I'm older like I know what I'm doing (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) yeah um so yeah that's that's kind yeah of and I applied to all the I tried to do it a bit more tactically this time mm-hmm. so I really um thought through my choices and was like what are my strengths and for me it was really my mm-hmm. academic like my UK cat was weak but A levels GCSEs mm-hmm. were they were really good so I was like mm-hmm. let me apply to somewhere that uses a point scoring system where yeah. I can kind of show off those assets you know mm-hmm. um and it paid off because all yeah. those things use that system and you know I got where I got to so yeah so did were you quite open-minded about where in the country you'd go like were you open to anywhere yes pretty much um mm-hmm. so mine were quite varied I applied to Kiel because mm-hmm. um I was already there and I was yep. like I know people who've gone through this process that I mm-hmm. can uh, talk to and stuff um and also it's a it's a really great med school yeah I applied to Hull York which was kind mm-hmm. of just like a random one for me I didn't not like I just didn't really want to go up north that much you know yeah, I'm from Manchester, yeah. like that's where I grew up mm-hmm. I was like even that but too much um too north for me and then I applied to Leicester because I came here on an open day nice. um, and I just fell in love with it I was like mm-hmm. I just love this city it really felt like home it really felt the right size the right vibe for me mm-hmm. um, so I was like 100% that was always my first choice um mm-hmm. and then when I got my offers I was like yeah yeah I'm coming here <laughs> yeah it's good when you've got a strong draw like you know like yeah. this is the one this is the one um had you looked much into the different courses in terms of like traditional versus some of the newer courses that do more placement like prosection versus dissection like had that weighed in much of it for you 
Um, so not initially. So initially I was looking at where will take me. I was like, yes, yeah. please take me. Yeah. Um, but then when I had my three um, options, mm -hmm. I really wanted to go somewhere that did full body dissections. That was a big mm -hmm. thing for me. And mm -hmm. um, Leicester did that. And so did Kiel. Mm -hmm. So those kind of, you know, they already overtook full yeah. to get away from mm -hmm. me. Um, so I looked at that um, in terms of whether it was PBL or whether it was more yeah. kind of group worky. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I would have still enjoyed PBL, but I'm mm -hmm. glad that I'm on the lesser course and we do kind of just answer questions as a group and work through cases together rather than okay. it be a complete PBL. Okay. Um, I know they do PBL and Kiel, but I'm not too sure to what extent, mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, but to be honest, like, I think the main thing was the place for me. Mm -hmm. um, so everything else kind of slid in together mm -hmm. like I'm glad that you know mm -hmm. Leicester has all these things that I wanted yeah. but the the place and where I want where I wanted to feel at home for the next five years or even more of my life mm -hmm. um yeah. yeah that was the main one yeah at the end of the day it's still a medical degree isn't it you know you come out yeah. with you know same skills same like same learning yeah exciting okay and other like so you, you know you said you've got strong academics that's obviously carried you really far like those other skills we talked about like communication did you feel like you were able to communicate them in your application as well or like how did you utilize your experience to maximize your application um let me try and think <laughs> um, i think those mm. skills um whilst in your personal statement yeah you can write about them mm -hmm. um i feel like most med schools now don't use them until it's literally kind of when it comes to giving yeah. out offers Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a, uh, it's a tie kind of situation. That's when they look at the personal statement. Mm -hmm. So that really came out for me um, when it came to the interview. So when I was practicing mm -hmm. my interviews, that's when I had a little notebook when I went on work experience. And mm -hmm. that was work experience from when that I started doing when I was like 15, 16. Mm -hmm. up until like, you know, my last few um, yeah. shifts at the, at the hospital on maternity. Mm -hmm. So whenever there was an experience or whenever there was something I felt like I um, gained from it, I wrote it down. And then when mm -hmm. it came through uh, preparing for my interview, I literally remember I sat down with my friends who are pharmacists and they were like, mm -hmm. okay, this is what you need to do. These are the NHS values. These are, this is what yeah, they're yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I literally went through the values and then I went through my experiences and tried to pick it out and mm -hmm. actually having someone there with me and talk things through mm -hmm. really helps. I do think that now the way the process is set up those skills only come out um at interview and it's mm -hmm. then up to you to kind of make the links and yeah. show them through and like mm -hmm. we said before it can literally come from anything yeah 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 I think also what you I forget as well is you say what the skill is and then forget to relate it back to you so I think writing it down and looking over your work experience is so important because you're like I have done this it's not this that I yeah. appreciate communication it's good it's that I personally have demonstrated it um so you have to kind of just yeah be your own like cheerleader in terms of like I have done this and you know I've done that so I suppose having someone with you to point that out could be really helpful as well yeah because I remember to start off with I was like but I don't have these skills and yeah. like I don't know where they yeah. are and my friends were like you were like president of a society what do you mean you don't have leadership mm -hmm. skills and I was like ah okay <laughs> they okay. are yeah so, yeah like that yeah. Yeah, yeah perfect yeah. I think sometimes like as medics we can be like too humble and you know you need to like push yourself mm -hmm. to, like you know you have you you know you have these things just finding them yeah and I think also it just seems like everyone is yeah the grade nine in this and like sports international in this and yeah. but you said you know like I think it seems more impressive when it's other people you know like oh I was only president of you know this for this time and you're like no that's that is impressive you know you, yeah. you own that um yeah it just is a definitely a pool of very um stink driven successful people but I think it's good you know you like use it to share the experiences I suppose but yeah and then it makes it fun when you're in med school because you're around people that yeah. you know share the same kind of values mm -hmm. as you and mm -hmm have the same drive and motivation that's why mm -hmm. I think medics always become such good friends because we're the only course I mean apart from like nursing and so on like mm -hmm. similarly mm -hmm. that are so well matched like in our values and like mm -hmm. what we want from life and how we are so mm -hmm. yeah no it's it's interesting yeah yeah perfect um so starting the course like we've talked about you've got this like academic background 
was medicine what you're expecting or was it still a bit of a like a shock how have you found like learning all the um material oh this is such a difficult question so um first year medicine mm-hmm. was so much more than I expected mm-hmm. like I expected to have fun and I expected to learn things and it was honestly just so much better than I ever expected okay. like okay. literally best time of my life mm-hmm. this year has been a lot more difficult like mm-hmm. Honestly, I don't know whether it's COVID. I don't know if it's online learning. I mean, mm-hmm. basically everything's online for us now and I'm, not, yeah. I'm hating it. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what um, And now I feel like, especially this semester, the feelings I've got are a bit like, this is something I've wanted for such a long time. And I thought that when I'd come to med school, everything would be so new and exciting. And I remember mm-hmm. before I came to med school, like someone would tell me about like a medical condition Mm-hmm. um and I would be curious and I'd be like oh, well, why this and I mm-hmm. want to know more and you know this and that and I had this kind of newness and like like this drive for it mm-hmm. honestly I just don't have that at the moment I'm just trying mm-hmm. to pass I'm just trying yeah. to get through every day I'm just trying to watch yeah. my lectures and not get yeah. behind mm-hmm. um so it definitely like I feel like you're on such a high when you get to med school Mm-hmm. And at one point or another, it might be in your first year, it might be in your third year, it might be in your second year, whatever. It, mm-hmm. The reality kind of hits and it becomes mm-hmm. a bit more mundane and a bit more like, oh no, this is just really hard work. And some things mm-hmm. you just kind of have to rogue learn and you just have to get through it. Mm-hmm. So that's where I'm at at the moment. I think once I get onto placement, I'll feel a lot better. Yeah. Um, yeah. Once this pandemic clears, I'll yeah. feel a lot better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the first year was absolutely like brilliant. It was so much mm-hmm. um much more than I expected I just had a a really Mm -hmm. good time basically yeah 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 I think there is just so much as well and you know like you said you're just even the most enthusiastic person you're going to have some topics that just aren't your favorite or um and sometimes it's just the amount is insane but I think yeah absolutely right you just have to sit down day in day out consistency just tick things off even if in that moment you're not yeah you, you know you're not feeling it you know just sit down watch that lecture make those yeah do yeah those cards. and I've actually found that um when I've had kind of times over the past year where my mental health wasn't that great mm-hmm. or I just couldn't like didn't have the motivation I actually yeah. felt like doing my work really helped me mm-hmm. like sometimes it is it reminds you of like why you're there in the first mm-hmm. place your purposes and you're like oh no this I've worked so hard for this like this is it yeah I'm here (laughs) I'm here here. here. Mm -hmm. (laughs) and you've got to have that realization so it's a it's a double-edged sword yeah yeah because it could be hard as well then if it if every day isn't everything you dreamed of you're like but I work so hard to be here I should be you know appreciating Mm -hmm. it I should be enjoying it but I suppose it's appreciation that you know everyone is super thrilled about every day but you still have you know you still did work for it and you know you will enjoy it in the end it's just yeah not every day can be um perfect yeah um so how, what have you done any placement yet so I don't know what your course is like um at Leicester do you um, do little bits along the way or yeah yeah so basically what we have um in first year is called mm-hmm. very early clinical experience so Vecchi as we call it mm-hmm. so okay. in literally your first week when everybody else is having freshers and you've already had your medic freshers so you're tired mm-hmm. out anyway um we go on to placement so you either have GP or hospital so I had one week of GP um it's a bit random because like you don't know anything so you can't do anything but it's Mm -hmm. mostly to just like remind you why you're there um Mm -hmm. and I loved it and it really put GP in a completely different life for me because I going into med school I was like ew GP is so boring like no I can never do like just a boring nine to five and now I'm like Mm -hmm. GP yes so exciting like so mm-hmm. many different people nice work-life balance I was like sounds mm-hmm. delicious. yeah great um so we had that and then we we're going to have the other week of it so yeah. it's, it's two weeks for first year um at the end of May and then I would have had hospital mm-hmm. but obviously corona said no yeah. um and we we're going to have placement this year as well in November and then corona mm-hmm. said no again and yeah. so we've got six sessions where we learn examinations okay um and we have um like we've been assigned a clinical tutor that we go on to place mm-hmm. and things like that so I think those sessions are going to be moved to the end of the year hopefully okay. things are a lot lighter in the summer mm-hmm. um, so yeah I'm really excited about it but my yeah. placement kind of experience is very limited at the yeah. moment <laughs> yeah 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 I remember my so we we do it a bit differently it wasn't 
intense week it was like uh, every other Thursday or one Thursday a month we'd go to GP and I remember being in the waiting room waiting to you know for the doctor that'd be looking after us to take us in and it came up on the screen um you know medical students here you know you may be asked if they can sit in and I was like that's that's me like um that's me I'm the medical student and I think that for me I think it's so important to see that place you're in like exactly yeah. as you said you know 100%. this is what I'm learning for this is what I'm training for is to be in this position so yeah I think it's even you know the pandemic has messed up a bit but I think there's some courses where you don't go in at all any More patient like contact that. for quite late on yeah, yeah. which you know different ways about it like we said you everyone comes out with a medical degree but I really enjoyed the placement um, yeah, early on. I I wanted that in a in, mm-hmm. a, in a course. I wanted to have that early uh, uh, contact with patients. Another thing that we do at Leicester is something called um, Patient Knows Best. Okay. So we do um, kind of text consultations with patients. Mm, so we okay. get a patient assigned for a year. Mm-hmm. And then obviously we don't do any diagnosis, things like that. It's mostly mm-hmm. just have a conversation about lifestyle and exploring. Mm-hmm. And usually patients that have a chronic illness. So we mm-hmm. explore what life is like for them with that illness. Mm-hmm. Um, and literally just chat to them. Like mm-hmm. uh, the last patient we had, we did a quiz um, with her and, you know, she'd send us recipes and we'd send her healthy recipes. Yeah. So it's all about kind of um, lifestyle and, you know, things that we can do at this level. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, we have had patient contact literally since the very first week. Mm-hmm. Um, and you do that in your groups. So you formulate a response as a group. So it's really good for like team building and mm-hmm. um, kind of learning how to talk to patients virtually, which mm-hmm. is we're probably going to do a lot more of now in the future. Yeah, anyway. yeah, I think um, so. yeah that's awesome. And do you think kind of your previous experiences has helped you in those scenarios? Because it's quite, you know, you're talking to strangers, you're asking quite personal questions, you know, you're having to work within a team. Like, do you feel better prepared, do you think, having done, you know, your previous degree and your work experience? Yeah, 100%. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I think again, it comes back around to confidence mm-hmm. and knowing kind of what's appropriate to say and what's inappropriate to say. Mm-hmm. Um, and whilst I think I did learn that a little bit through my work experience, mm-hmm. um, I think the most, most of it just came from kind of, um, like, I don't know, not to sound like bad, but like growing up, like just yeah. just literally being at university, um, having friends from different backgrounds, going to different societies, seeing how people interact with each other, um, having that kind of confidence to say, to volunteer, be like, yeah, I'll do that presentation or I'll mm-hmm. take that, you know, examination, um, things like that. So I do think like looking back on 18 year old me, mm-hmm. I thought I was confident. I was not, I was not in it. Um, and yeah I, I like I wouldn't change it for the world I think mm-hmm. the place where I'm at right now it is right for medicine and I know it will still push mm-hmm. me out of my comfort zone uh, but I don't know if I would have coped with it being like where I was when I was younger yeah but I do know so many like undergrads on my course that are fabulous like yeah I, I admire them I'm like I couldn't do yeah. that at your age what the heck <laughs> yeah I was yeah I was about to say I'm kind of in awe of the, yeah the students that rock up like me at that age I would have really struggled and I think I'd have missed a lot of opportunities being too shy or too nervous to put myself out yeah. there and you know I'm by no means amazing at it now there's still a lot of times where it's you know difficult but that's now you know I think I'd have struggled a lot more um yeah. so I think maybe people just have their right time I suppose you know like you get in when you're ready maybe something you know I do big and reaching like that yeah no, I do think there's something in that I do think like everybody obviously like will kind of blossom at different points mm-hmm. in their life and grow kind of into themselves at different points in their life and for some of us that might be 18 for some of us yeah. that might be 25 and for someone mm-hmm. that might be 35 and mm-hmm. I love that about medicine that we are all kind of from such varied backgrounds and mm-hmm. like I have nurses and physios on my course yeah. and I have people who barely just turned 18 when they came it's it's, yeah. it's it makes for such a varied and like interesting atmosphere. Mm-hmm. I think it's awesome, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And then you carry that on, you know, as you go into the field and then you get to then meet the people from their different like disciplines in the teams. So yeah, I think it's something that if you appreciate now, you're gonna really enjoy in the future. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Perfect. Um, how have you found kind of extracurriculars like are you continuing you sounded quite busy in your first degree um is it something you're continuing with have you found maybe different things that you hadn't tried before 
And um, so in my first degree, I tried uh, pole fitness and dance. Nice. Yeah. Um, and yeah, absolutely loved it. Mm-hmm. I took a break. I think it was for third year just to kind of concentrate on my third year. Mm-hmm. And just because um, I wasn't vibing with the society, basically. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. It was a bit meh. Um, and then when I came to Leicester, I uh, picked it back up again. And the society mm-hmm. was absolutely awesome. So mm-hmm. Um, I've really, really enjoyed getting back into it and it's just been so much fun. And then this year I'm president, but we've not been able to do anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's a bit frustrating. I'm like, oh, the one year mm-hmm. I'm president, I don't even get to do a showcase or anything. So, mm-hmm. um, so that's one extracurricular that um, mm-hmm. I do. And then last year in January, I um, started um, working, um, basically having my own business. Nice. Um, with this wellness company um, mm-hmm. called Arbon. I don't know if you've mm-hmm. ever heard of them before. Yeah, so right. I, um, so that's also something that basically I do kind of alongside med school. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also do uh, tutoring just again nice. as a source of extra income mm-hmm. on top of my business. So um, yeah. I try to kind of keep myself busy outside of mm-hmm. medicine. Especially yeah. it helped in the pandemic because there's nothing else much to do. So I'm like, mm-hmm. well, I may as well be making money. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah no I think it's so important to carry on your extracurriculars and equally if you had extracurriculars you didn't enjoy I think it's so important to start something new like Mm -hmm. when I came to uni with pole that was something I've always wanted to try but never really had the opportunity to and I just Mm -hmm. like let's go for it and she fallen in love (laughs) yeah and have you found that okay with like timings have you had to be particularly like oh I suppose everyone's organized especially you know in medicine but yeah have you found it a bit sometimes a challenge or has it been okay um so I I found that the more that I do the better organized I am yeah so like in in first year I was I think I was a bit better at getting myself organized I mean Mm -hmm. tutoring I've only done from this um from this year Mm -hmm. so that's kind of another thing that came Mm -hmm. up um I think it's just about like managing your time and like being sometimes strict with yourself. So yeah, if, you, if I know, for example, on Wednesdays and on Thursdays, I've got in the evening tutoring and then, mm-hmm. um, then I just won't kind of plan anything else. So I'll do my work earlier mm-hmm. in the day and it's not been too bad, honestly, like mm-hmm. in terms of time management, I think um, for me, it's just the right amount. So to spend mm-hmm. like half an hour every day on my business, Mm-hmm. and then two hours a week on tutoring and then kind mm-hmm. of the rest doing med, med school when um we were doing poll showcases and it was literally like the the week before the mm-hmm. um the showcase obviously that was a bit intense because you have to rehearse and like you mm-hmm. have to be there and things like that but mm-hmm. obviously that's one little crunch period that you can yeah. from so it's actually been okay yeah yeah okay and how are you finding tutoring is it something do you get many opportunities on the course to teach like peer-to-peer teaching I know is biggest medicine is this something that yeah how are you finding it do you think you'll carry on with a bit more teaching um so it's not something that I do like for medicine so I'll choose yeah. for, like students um, and yeah. that do GCSEs and mm-hmm. degree, so science and maths mm-hmm. um but I really enjoyed it and I never mm-hmm. thought of myself as like a teacher mm-hmm. and at first I had such like like an imposter syndrome like I was like oh, yeah. why are you good and then my students were like oh, I'm doing so much better in school and yeah. you know they get good report grades and things like that I'm like mm-hmm. oh I'm actually helping here yeah um so it's really rewarding and I think um I'm I wouldn't rule it out in the future mm-hmm. like for doing like medical teaching um I think it would actually be pretty fun and I know um the tutors that we have now for group work at, here at Leicester mm-hmm. are like F3 um, okay. doctors. Okay. So they've done the foundation training and then now they're mm-hmm. doing like clinical teaching fellow kind of mm-hmm. year. And I kind of, I thought about that. I was like, maybe that is something that I would want to do. Um, yeah. Because I do think it's rewarding and I think it's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's that moment as well where you may be a bit worried if you're not, you know, who am I to teach this and then someone says oh thank you that's really helpful and yeah I think it's um yeah it's really rewarding and they see medicine it seems to be really big on yeah peer-to-peer teaching and um yeah and teaching within the community talking about you know maybe in the future do you have any specialities that stick out to you that you've got interest in or are you very open-minded at the moment um I think two that stick out for me at the moment um mm-hmm. GP is one of them yeah yeah I'd really love to um be a quite a holistic GP 
Mm-hmm. So I'd love to be a GP that really looks at lifestyle medicine mm-hmm. and wellness in general. That's kind of like my yeah. thing. Um, both kind of the combination between mind and body. I think it's, mm-hmm. it's something that um, is really like worth exploring in medicine in the future. And I think mm-hmm. it's not done enough yet. I think it will be, but mm-hmm. I'd very much love to be kind of a part of that. Um, so GP in that sense, when it mm-hmm. comes to kind of that specialty on, on lifestyle and, and nutrition as well um or oncology oncology is something that's always kind of uh been there from like first from a science perspective for me Mm because I I find the genetics of cancer and Mm -hmm. um the different drugs and things how they work I find it really Mm -hmm. interesting um and I when I did my undergrad dissertation it was on leukemia um Mm -hmm. so it's that kind of you know had an interest in mm-hmm. and then when I did um my work experience at the shadowing like I mentioned before mm-hmm. that was in oncology and I found that so rewarding as well and mm-hmm. kind of reaffirmed it for me but obviously I haven't spent extensive periods in oncology yeah. and I know it can be quite emotionally taxing so I don't know mm-hmm. how I'll deal with it on like a large scale mm-hmm. and it, of course it's longer training and I don't know about mm-hmm. you but I'm as a grad I'm a little bit like let me just call the fly <laughs> Uh, yeah, so there's yeah. definitely that time pressure I don't know like I do definitely want to have a family at some point and mm-hmm. want to kind of chill a bit um mm-hmm. for example like academia I don't think I'm going to go into much research in academia mm-hmm. and stuff. so even if I went down the oncology route it would definitely be more like clinical oncology rather than the research mm-hmm. side um so yeah those are like my main two but I am pretty open-minded yeah. I know that I can go on to placement and you know be taken See, taken yeah. away by a random yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there I am <laughs> yeah um it feels as well like they both though like cancer you know, potentially people can live with it for you know years and years so it feels like the whole lifestyle wellness holistic approach really fits that you know it fits everywhere in medicine to be honest but it feels like another speciality which would really do with looking at someone as, as a whole rather yeah. than their illness so it, yeah it feels like if that's your passion you could apply it to quite a few fields and really yeah make a, no that's definitely there. it I think I just don't think we have enough of it in mm. medicine. I think Western medicine strays so far away from it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think only now we're starting to see kind of the benefits of looking mm-hmm. after our minds and looking after our bodies in such like more of a holistic mm-hmm. way. Um, and I do think in oncology, actually, you do a lot of that because mm-hmm. you really have to look at the patient and mm-hmm. the whole life, their job, their family yeah. relations, things like that, because cancer does affect your whole life. Yeah. Um, a lot more than some other illnesses you know so mm-hmm. um no I agree with you that it is something that could be applied to kind of both sides yeah and I don't know what were your placements do you think you're gonna like are you happy that you're gonna get exposure to I suppose GP you will definitely see quite a lot of um do you do you see oncology during placements in med school or is that something that you maybe have to see outside I think you do. So for okay. us, the way it works is in third year, you have a block of GP, a block of surgery and a block of medicine. Okay. So you wouldn't do oncology there, but I believe mm-hmm. fourth or fifth year, you have a specific oncology block. Okay. Okay. Um, as far as I know. So I know I will do a block of oncology, mm-hmm. um, which I think is going to be something like six or seven weeks. Yeah. So not okay. extensive, but I think it will be enough to, you know, um, mm-hmm. you can kind of actually do more things within the field rather than just observe mm-hmm. but then yeah even then we then got a foundation years before we even yeah. have to think about specializing so yeah there's a long way away. people always ask me and I'm like well it's like five six seven years like, yeah. I don't know yeah but you're kind of I suppose you just I think part of it for me when I decided because I've done quite a few years at uni before was it's kind of you just got to enjoy now you know if you're looking exactly. ahead at being a consultant I just don't think you'd make it you'd just be too <laughs> longed out by it and you'd be so overwhelmed you'd be like I'm never gonna get there but I suppose you're enjoying now and you yeah. enjoy foundation and you enjoy speciality it seemed it'll just come around suddenly one day 100% and the time goes by so quickly like mm-hmm. I thought wow five years is such a long way like I'm nearly halfway like I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm basically nearly a virgin like, she's gone. yeah yeah um like that so I, I don't think I think no matter what age you are, mm-hmm. if, if medicine is like a, you know, if it's there, like in your yeah. heart, 
Mm-hmm. You should try it because you know what? You're going to be five years older anyway. You may as well be yeah. five years older and a doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's so many practicalities that it just makes sense as a job for, like, as a job for so many people. There's so many different specialities. You know, we've talked about you can do teaching. It's not for you, but you can do academia and, like, you can go into radiology, GP. You know, there is, it's just, oh. it, yeah, it fits for a lot of people. So um, even if, yeah, it takes a while to get there. I think uh, yeah worth it hopefully um so is just where you're at now if you kind of had advice to yourself before you started the course or for anyone starting the course now like what have you learned now that you think would be really helpful uh starting again like your top tip (laughs) that's a good question that's a good question one thing well I mean uh some some things you know okay um I think number one and I think I think this is something I did but I think it's only something I did because I already went to uni Mm -hmm. um so I knew I had to do it um Mm -hmm. but for anyone starting medicine I'd say take all the opportunities you are given just try things out Mm -hmm. whether that's on places whether that's societies whether that's just meeting new people whether that's Mm -hmm. going to a place you've never been before literally just say yes just take the opportunity yeah. chances are nothing bad is going to happen and something amazing could happen mm-hmm. um so yeah that would be I'd say like my number one tip my um other tip is just do your flashcards as you go along just do yeah. things as you go I along I need to hear that I <laughs> need to hear that, that yeah <laughs> please yeah. don't do it to yourself and yeah. um and yeah and another and uh, like my last thing which I still need to keep telling myself now is just listen in your lectures I find it really hard to like concentrate Mm -hmm. so when it's back to traditional lectures just try to kind of be in the moment because now Mm -hmm. I find if I'm losing concentration I'll pause it grab myself a cup of tea shake about a bit you know and restart so it's fine Mm -hmm. but when the lectures are live or when they're kind of in person I Mm -hmm. I really struggle with concentration honestly like Mm -hmm. 20 minutes in I'm like off somewhere else looking at Mm -hmm. my phone don't put it on airplane mode put it to the side yeah concentrate what's in front of you because you actually yeah. learn so much just from listening to the lecture mm-hmm. you'd really be surprised I think that's something people are like oh it's just a lecture you know I can just do this in my own time but how many times mm-hmm. do you actually do it in your own time so no. no, 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 it doesn't no. get opened again no. yeah <laughs> No, I feel like yeah, I've no, needed definitely. these. Yeah, forget people starting. Yeah. I, I need <laughs> I these. Need to I need reminded. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that's one of the maybe like plus sides of online learning is you can do it in your own time in your own space when you're. I think the dis- the difficulty is the discipline to do it, but yeah. it means that actually there is a bit more flexibility. Um, I have enjoyed yeah. online lectures, mm-hmm. not group yeah. work, but lectures. Yeah, hundred percent. I think it is better, and I think it's something that med schools to an extent will keep in the future I yeah. can't imagine them going back to 100 percent like no. traditional lectures no. no I can't see it now um I can't see it and I've actually found that people have been quite interactive in lectures because you've got the chat function and people you know, you know in a live lecture very few people yeah. ask questions yeah. or yeah because it's you know it's intimidating room full of 200 so many people. people yeah but you know you're on the computer you've got the chat box the lecturer can actually be a lot more interactive so I think there are positives um quite a few to come out of it um so yeah we'll see what medical education or all uni education will look like going yeah. forward um yeah I think they are really good top tips for whatever you're doing whatever you're studying um yeah they're really helpful um so yeah thank you so much for coming to talk to me today um it's been really interesting hearing your story and I think it will help a lot of people um especially currently doing undergrad degrees thinking of starting medicine um and yeah those top tips do your flashcards <laughs> that's early thank you so yeah. much for having me it's honestly been such a pleasure um chatting mm-hmm. to you and yeah mm-hmm. i hope people find some goodness in my story and take something away from it and yeah if anybody needs any advice or right. wants mm-hmm. to chat to me please just slide into my dms yeah yeah i'll <laughs> like put the details open, yeah. So, yeah yeah um I'd love to I love chatting to other medics and prospective mm-hmm. students you know I think we need to like build ourselves up build mm-hmm. each other up um mm-hmm. and you know pass on that confidence because so much of it is just confidence honestly <laughs> perfect yeah I'll put all your details in the link below so right. everyone can find you um yeah perfect thank you very much thank you